spider crane safety precautions, always wear protective clothing such as hard hat, steel toe foot gear, safety glasses, shirt and pants. Read and understand the operators and maintenance manual for model URW295 prior to operating the spider crane. Perform a daily walk around inspecting the spider crane for damage and or excessive wear. If required, call a local spider crane dealer for parts and technical support. Now is a good time to fuel the crane and check the oil before beginning operation. Make sure all placards or stickers are installed and legible on the crane. If in doubt, see the operator's manual for assistance. Do not operate this crane until you are fully prepared and have read the operator's manual. Read and understand the hand signals chart prior to crane operation. Spider crane crawl levers. There are three crawler lever positions. Stowage position. Crane travel position. Crane operation position. There are two travel levers at the rear of the spider crane. They are used to select three different unit functions. Stowage, travel, crane. First make sure the crawler levers are in the travel position. Start the engine with the ignition key. It is unsafe to move loads with the mini crawler crane when it is in travel mode. When starting the diesel version of the mini crawler in cold weather, turn the key to the glow plug first, then start the engine. Never travel unless the boom out triggers and the hooks are properly stowed. Go slowly and carefully while traveling. There are lifting locations at the top of these stowed out triggers that permit lifting and loading the crane on a hauler. Lifting eyes located on top of stowed outriggers can be used to lift the spider crane onto rooftops and haulers. Gas to propane conversion. Step 1. Turn fuel valve off. Step 2. Start engine to high idle until engine dies. Step 3. Fully open propane tank. Step 4. Start engine. Propane to gas. Step 1. Shut off propane. Step 2. Start engine on high idle until engine dies. Step 3. Open fuel valve. Step 4. Start engine. Do not operate the crane on steep incline beyond 20 degrees. Make sure the soil is stable. When traveling up and down, and incline always stand at the uphole position. When moving the mini crawler crane, track mats are needed on all surfaces other than solid ground. Please see the operator's manual for further important information. Also, when turning the mini crawler crane, it is best to use both levers for minimal track wear. When in travel mode, the maximum ground force for the URW295 mini crawler crane is 6.96 PSI. Setup of the spider crane. After arriving at the destination, run the engine at low speed and return the crawler levers to crane operation position. Begin with the crane crawl lever in crane position. Make sure the surrounding ground is solid and firm for outrigger placement. From the operator station, select the outrigger mode switch on the console. After selecting outrigger mode, you will hear a bell sound, voice command, and the amber light will illuminate to let you know you are in outrigger mode. Begin by removing the stove pin and rotating each outrigger leg to your desired position. Secondly, select the outrigger configuration that best suits the work site. It is best to position outriggers in max configuration as often as possible. 
Each outrigger leg has its own switch located on the operator console. Each switch is numbered and corresponds with the number on the outrigger leg. Next, level the crane. Select the individual outrigger switch for extension or retraction. For direction, activate the outrigger knob for outrigger motion. Activate outrigger legs and view bubble gauge until the crane is level. Once the crane is leveled, switch the crane or outrigger selector switch located on the console to crane mode. It will go out and you will hear a bell sound and a voice command that tells you the crane is in crane mode. Once in crane mode, lower the hook using the hook down or up lever. This will disengage the anti-two block weight and let you operate the crane. At this time, you can operate the crane using normal boom functions to the designated load. The max line pull value of the URW295 is 20 to 50 pounds. Getting familiar with the load chart. Range diagram decals are located each side of the main boom. These diagrams are used to identify how much weight can be lifted at various boom lengths and boom angles. To calculate rated loads and working radius, refer to the rate load chart located on the operator's console. Example 1. The range diagram demonstrates with the boom elevated at a 50 degree angle First stage extended the working radius is 5 feet and the lifting capacity is 5850 pounds. Example 2. The range diagram demonstrates with the boom elevated at a 50 degree angle. Fifth stage extended the working radius is 18 feet and the lifting capacity is 750 pounds. It is the operator's responsibility to know the weight of the load prior to lifting. The URW295 has 53 outrigger configurations to allow better navigation around obstacles. The following diagrams show 9 of these configurations, and the shaded areas show where crane lifting is prohibited. Radio Remote Control The radio remote control is a handheld device that allows the crane operator to operate the crane up to 100 yards from the spider crane. You can perform all of the crane functions except for the travel functions with the remote control. Every remote system is equipped with a different radio frequency allowing multiple spider cranes to perform on the same job site. See the operator's manual for complete radio remote functions. When using the radio remote, the winch and the telescopic functions can be synchronized to allow the load to be constant. This is achieved by selecting both functions when the winch button is released or reactivated. While holding the boom telescope button engaged, the winch speed will adjust accordingly. In order to switch the crane from manual control station to handheld remote radio, and vice versa, you are required to select desired setting using manual or remote switch located on the dash panel and press the activation button on the remote control. If the hook comes into contact with the overwind weight, the alarm will sound, and the winch, the boom up and boom extension functions will stop. Lowering the hook will relieve the overwinding contact allowing the crane to perform normally. The override switch for the overwinding stop feature can be used if the overwinding stop has malfunction and the crane will not move. Hold the override button for the automatic stop. Wind up hook and safely stow the crane until the problem is repaired. Overturn protection. A safety device that monitors the ground pressure of each individual outrigger during crane operation. 
The device also monitors earth movements, whereas LMI systems cannot. An alarm will sound immediately when an outrigger loses ground pressure. In the event a second outrigger senses a reduction in the ground pressure, the crane will stop. The crane will only allow the operator to perform the necessary functions to return to a safe work zone. When the alarm sounds intermittently, the crane is operating at 85% of its max capacity. When the alarm sounds constant, the crane is in overload. You should always reference the load chart and not rely on the turnover protection 100% to ensure safety. The maximum point loading pressure imposed on an outrigger while the crane is handling the max load is 152.2 psi. Stowing the spider crane. To stow the crane for travel, retract the boom completely. Stop the hook just short of the overwinding weight. Stew the boom 10 degrees left center of the operator console, then boom down to 0 degrees. Move the boom toward the center and it will automatically stop in the middle of proper storage. Stow the hook block by holding the hook block stow switch on the front of the console. Next, switch the crane back to outrigger mode. Retract all outriggers until they are vertical, then pin them in their stow position. Finally, proceed to the rear of the crane and put the crane crawl levers back into the crawl position.